Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being with us on this Friday. I have with us today our, the brand new Deputy Chief of Winter Haven, Vance Monroe. Now, the reason he doesn't know where to stand is because he retired as a major, I mean, a, a major for me in charge of all the east side of the county. But Director Charlie Bird, who's a dear friend of mine and he's the public safety director for Winter Haven, said, uh, Sheriff, I believe I'll recruit him to come work with us. So, you know, when I talk about relationships and the relationships we have, Director uh, Charlie Bird is, is a dear, dear friend of mine, and he's the big, big boss over public safety, all of public safety for Winter Haven. And then, of course, Vance Monroe, the new deputy police chief, is, uh, is a dear friend of mine and a val valued, very valued major that just retired. So I'm sad to see him go, but I'm happy that he's at Winter Haven and they haven't scooped him up and taken him off to another part of the state. So here's what we want to talk about today. It's rare that you see a serial sex offender, but we had one amongst us. And I can't compliment the Winter Haven Police Department and my deputies enough for their work. I'm going to show you the photograph of a very dangerous person. He has a pedigree in being a sexual offender, a deviant. And it's just by the grace of God, at least that we know of, that we don't have any sexually abused dead children. But Deputy Chief Vance Monroe is going to talk more about that. Let me introduce you to Robert Miranda. Robert is 42 years of age. He was arrested in 2000 for lewd battery on a 12-year-old child. At that time, he was 17. So, for whatever reasons, they withheld adjudication but the good news was they did designate him as a sexual offender. Now, he has a criminal history for years of cocaine abuse, and he bounces back and forth between Brevard County, Polk County, different counties. He gets probation here, probation there. He's locked up for some period of time. But this guy has never been to state prison, and he's got a long criminal history. So let me take you to February 16th of this year at Avenue A and 2nd Street Southwest. There's a mother and daughter who are 30 and 60 years of age. They are simply visiting Winter Haven from North Carolina because they wanted to take a vacation. They looked online and said that, wow, that Winter Haven's a beautiful place. Let's go down and check it out. Well, they saw more than they wanted to. So they're literally standing and admiring Winter Haven when this guy pulls up in a gray Mitsubishi Outlander and masturbates in their presence. Will they attempt to get his tag number? He doesn't have a tag number. So they notify the Winter Haven Police Department. Now let's jump ahead a week. No more activity, February 23rd at 7.20 in the morning at Avenue H and 15th Street Northeast, Winter Haven. This one is in the unincorporated area, just outside of the city of Winter Haven, where this guy pulls up and at 7.20 in the morning, ask this nine-year-old child, you know, have you lost a dog? I've got this brown and black puppy shivering in my car. Come over here and look at it. Well, even at that age, she ran. She ran to a neighbor. She was out waiting to go to school. She ran to a neighbor to report this guy who called, reported that information to us. 
Then just a few minutes later at 740, he shows up again at Avenue J Southeast and 4th Street inside the city. Now understand between the city and the county is just like a street or two. So on February 23rd at Avenue J, he, he drove to a, up to a 12-year-old who was wearing a hoodie and had bangs and started masturbating in the presence of the 12-year-old. And that was reported to the Winter Haven Police Department. So the Winter Haven Police Department, as the chief, deputy chief will explain, they put out a bulletin. They're on it. We, we figure out, hey, after talking to, to the police, that it's not just our one in the county. It's not just their two in the county. We're up to three in a very short period of time. We don't have a tag number. He doesn't have a tag on his vehicle. Now, folks, when we saw this pattern of activity, there is normal criminal conduct that we all deal with. And when you look at the three of us, I like to think of me as the youngest of the three. But when you look at the three of us, we've got 100 years of experience in this business, more than 100 years of experience. We knew immediately that we were dealing with a deviant, that a, a dangerous deviant. Between the police department and the sheriff's office, we had over 100 detectives working on this case. And here's what our supervisors told them. It's a gray Mitsubishi Outlander with no tag. Now go find the guy. Now folks, that's no leads at all. He's supposed to be in his 20s or 30s. He's wearing all black. When he does these things, he's wearing black shorts, black shirts, and a black or dark colored mask. And the detectives start to work. They piece together video that all of the detectives working together, they piece together videos. And on one piece of video in another part of town, guess what? We found a tag number. So I want to stop for a moment and I want to congratulate and thank the business owners of Winter Haven. When you put that video in place to protect your customers, to serve your customers, to protect your business, you all collectively stopped a serial sex offender and allowed that person to be caught. And I congratulate our business community. So we do this investigation. We have the tag number. It leads us to mom. It turns out the family owns a used car auto auction between Haines City and Lake Alfred. And she has loaned this car to her son, who is an auctioneer. We find him in the car in Titusville. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. That's how awesome all of our detectives working together and the strength of our partnerships working together in fast order. We found a guy on the other side of the state that was an imminent danger to the children here in Polk County. We then learned, obviously, and his mother told us, hey, he's a registered sex offender. And we arrested him on March the 1st in Brevard County and served search warrants at his house. Guess what we found? Newsflash, black surgical mask. Then we did a search warrant on his outlander, and guess what we found? Newsflash, more masks. One of them had what appeared to be polka dots from a distance, and there it was in the vehicle. Well, March 6 was his birthday, and that's the day he arrived at the county jail in Polk County. We moved him back over here five days later. That was only part of his birthday present was to visit Grady Town. The other part of his present was our detectives in addition to the sex offender violations, lodged attempted kidnapping charges. 
and lewd behavior conduct, uh, conduct charges. Our goal is to lock him up for the rest of his life. We were able to enhance these charges because he was wearing a mask when he committed the crime. Our state attorney, Brian Haas, is simply the very best. He and his office recognize how dangerous this person is, and now he's locked up. But for the remaining uh, information, I want to turn it over to Deputy Chief Vance Monroe, and then the director is going to talk to us a little bit. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. I want to uh, reiterate something that the sheriff said here. It was a great partnership with the Polk County Sheriff's Office and the Winter Haven Police Department. The winner here are the citizens of Polk County and the citizens of Winter Haven. Without this partnership, we will have a deviant running around our particular city. But along those lines, let's, let's, let's talk about something else. Mr. Miranda had access to these vehicles through that auction. So where did he go? In Central Florida was his playground. So I think we need to have these other agencies, other jurisdictions, they may do, need to look at some of their uh, particular crimes in their particular areas and see in, if Mr. Miranda or if they had crimes where an individual came up and tried to solicit children, adults, um, tried to get them to go into their vehicles varying times of days or school bus stops or any other locations um, and trying to solicit anyone else because Mr. Miranda didn't he did not discriminate uh, as you saw the first two individuals were adults then it escalated uh, we are fortunate with the hard work of the detectives of the Polk County Sheriff's Office at Winter Haven Police Department that we were able to capture this deviant um, like the sheriff said like I said it was great teamwork on our part with our with our organizations and I'm proud of that work, and especially with the sheriff at the lead, because we know how the sheriff feels about anyone coming in our county messing with anyone in Polk County. Now, rest assured, if you step in Winter Haven, I'm pretty sure the feelings are going to be pretty much the same as sheriff. I don't want anyone stepping in Winter Haven doing anything or looking at our children or our, our citizens in this manner. This subject had access via the auction to all types of vehicles. So where did he go? So where was he getting these vehicles from? So as we give, receive more information and as we ask the citizens to call in to their particular local jurisdictions and if we receive any information, we will continue our investigations on our end and share the information that we have. But we are just thankful that we we're able to bring this subject, Mr. Miranda, to justice. And he will, he will face justice in these particular cases. Thank you. <clears throat> First, I just want to say thank you to all of everyone's hard work uh, for putting this guy getting him identified and putting this guy where he needs to be. But what I really want to kind of hit on is the relationships and partnerships. Without those partnerships and those relationships, this kind of investigation goes many, many, many months, maybe even years before it gets solved, if it even gets solved. And frankly, in Polk County, that's the one thing that I grew up here, and I am very proud of the fact that we have those relationships in Polk County. You go to other counties, you don't have those relationships. So here, here's the thing. Without Polk County Sheriff's Office working with the Winter Haven Police Department in the manner that they did and piecing these things together, and just like the sheriff said, working in partnership with the community because we have to have those relationships with the community. The relationships with those victims that, 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 did, that, that got the information that, that were taught, those young, those young children that were taught stranger danger, whatever the, whatever the program was, to run away and grab the information they could and provide that to us so that we can do that investigation. 
That's what those partnerships are all about. Those are the things that make us be able to be successful uh, as public safety uh, employees. And now we're taking the next step of that. The next step of that is, is, as you heard the chief and the sheriff say, we're putting this information out there so that other police departments, and hopefully they don't just stick their nose and their head in the sand, that they actually pay attention to what's going on here and all the hard work that these detectives have done and utilize that to potentially solve some cases in their, in their jurisdictions. Because I'm going to tell you something, and the sheriff's probably going to say that, so I'm sorry if I'm stealing your thunder, Sheriff. The fact of the matter is that this guy ain't done this, this isn't his first time. Ain't his first rodeo. There are victims out there. So that's the next step in this partnership is reaching out and asking for that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I want to say preach it on. <laughs> that's, we can't rely on a police agency to say, hey, we've got this guy in an outlander vehicle. If you have anything like this, let us know. His dad owns a used car auction. It's endless, the vehicles. And like the director and the chief said, this guy's 42 years old. And to quote Director Bird, this ain't his first rodeo. There are other victims out there. What we don't know is are there dead children someplace around this state with detectives working around the clock trying to figure it out with another vehicle with no tag on it, with a similar MO? That's our big fear is what else has he done because he has. And his parents told us part of his job at the auction is to move around Florida looking for vehicles for them to auction off. So he goes to different car dealerships and businesses all over the state. In fact, he was cited in, I believe it was Titusville or someplace in Brevard County for operating a vehicle without a tag on it. So did that police officer catch him just before he was going to grab a child someplace else? Or did he expose himself to some adult who just paid no attention and wandered away? But listen, folks, I want the community all to hear what the chief and, and the director and I'm saying. We need to charge him with everything he's ever done. If he gets out again, he'll be after your kids again. And that's a guarantee because that's who he is. Any questions for us? Sheriff, I just wanted to ask you, what was your reaction to seeing the surveillance footage? I was first excited that we had the surveillance footage, and you'll be able to see some of it. You can see, see how strategic and stealthful he was in his conduct, where he would take the tag off and back around, and, and he kind of hid the car so he could put the tag back on it, and the tag was off when he would actually go to his prey. This guy planned his events in advance. That's why I think there's a real, real, real possibility of a lot of other events. I pray that there's no dead children, dead and sexually abused children in the group, but this guy has been doing this for a while. That. Once again, there's 100 years of law enforcement experience here. We've been there, done that, investigating these kinds of people in the past. They are rare, but they are real and they are dangerous. And you've already spoken to this, but I think people may hear 100 de detectives. You know, you expelled a lot of resources on this. Obviously, you were trying to prevent the worst. You thought that the worst was possible. That's exactly what my, my colleagues, and once again, you, you know, I brag on my deputies, my detectives, and the relationships with the police department. We had cops out on every street all over Winter Haven because we knew he was coming back. But we happened to find him before he came back. And the reason for a lot of these resources is we had no tag number. 
All we had was a description, and we could not allow him to come back to this defined area, which is now his area of attack, without us being there. So how do you make sure he does not get out of our dragnet? You put law enforcement officers every place. And I thank God for our detectives that found him before he got a ch child that we know of. He may, um, I suspect, he may have abduct abducted a child someplace in the state and we are unaware of it. Yes, ma'am. Um, you may have already addressed this, but why was the Winter Haven area his chosen area or? He lived in Titusville but his mom and dad own the dealership in Haines City, between Haines City and Lake Alfred. There are some mobile homes or trailers there that he stays there around auction days because he's an auctioneer. And he works at, at the auction house. And he, he, he's one of the employees. So, so even though he lives in Titusville, he's over here at least couple of days, two or three days a week around the auction. Then he's then he travels all throughout Central Florida in order to try to find vehicles for the auction. So that's why it's wherever he happens to be at that moment in time. Anything else? Y'all have a great weekend and help us with this because he's been here before someplace. Take care.